Dr. Jason Saunders here. Today we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen and TBI, traumatic brain injury, also concussion. We'll, we'll combine those two uh, into one video. And what I want to be clear about is, like I said in the introduction video, hyperbaric oxygen provides oxygen. That's what it does. So it provides oxygen as a fuel. And as a result of being exposed to oxygen, coming back out of oxygen, being exposed to oxygen, coming back out, repetitive use over time. It also acts as a cell signaling device. We covered a lot of detail in those areas in previous videos. So now we're going to say, well, can we use or should we use hyperbaric oxygen for a TBI? And the answer is yes, but why? Why should we be able to? How do we communicate that? And how are we sure that we can talk about it in a way that both tells the truth to the patient or to other healthcare providers, but also allows them to understand why? Why is it possible that, you know, being inside of a chamber, getting this oxygen through hyperbaric oxygenation could help a TBI? So, in order to do that, we want to understand what is a TBI. If we have trauma and it happens to be to the area of the brain, it's likely that there's going to be some brain tissue damage. The capillaries that are supplying oxygen to the brain in that area are likely to be damaged, meaning that there's going to be some type of gas exchange issue, that there's going to be some type of blockage not allowing oxygen delivery into that area. But also, capillaries don't only bring the good things in, the fuel and the oxygen, they also remove the waste products. We need our capillary system to grab cellular waste products and to remove them from the area. And when we don't do that, that tissue or those cells become inflamed. And so we have this trauma, we have this reduction in oxygen, we have this reduction in fuel delivery, we have this reduction in removal of waste products, and this bathing of inflammation. And so can hyperbaric help this person? Now, with TBI or concussion, much like the majority of things that we could help patients with, the sooner we can get to getting a patient into a hyperbaric oxygenation environment, the more improvements we are likely to see. But what does hyperbaric do? So right away, if we have brain tissue that's not getting oxygen, that tissue starts to downregulate function because it needs the oxygen. Brain tissue is very metabolically active. It requires a lot of oxygen in order to continue to process. And when it's not getting the oxygen, it starts to downregulate the cells and the tissues actually to prevent them from dying. So even within your first session or two, that increased oxygen that we're dissolving in the plasma will immediately be able to be free floating and delivered to an area that's becoming hypoxic. So very quickly, we can start getting oxygen into an area of hypoxia or of oxygen need. Along with that, we are going to start stimulating angiogenesis, literally new capillary growth. And so as the person is being exposed to repetitive treatments and we're getting this new capillary growth, yes, we'll get immediate oxygen from the free-floating oxygen in the session, but over time, the body will be able to rebuild those capillary networks so that the body can continue to oxygenate that tissue even once you stop doing the therapy. Next, we talked about the uh, damage and the inflammation. And so we know that hyperbaric has this way of immediately reducing inflammation reducing inflammatory cytokines, and then increasing our body's own anti-inflammatory cytokines. So we can get this real shift of inflammation inside the body pretty quickly after just a few sessions of hyperbaric. So we're going to reduce the inflammation. We're going to drive the oxygen. As we rebuild those capillary networks, we're going to be able to start pulling the waste products away, which is also going to help reduce the cellular inflammation in that area. Lastly, if there was tissue damage, we also know that hyperbaric increases central nervous system stem cells. Depending on the pressure and the oxygen percentage that you're using, there's a difference between how many stem cells you might be able to mobilize. But we know that depending on the pressure you're getting, the percentage of oxygen you're breathing, and the amount of sessions you get, you could be getting anywhere from three to eight times more stem cell mobilization inside your brain than what we're getting right now. And so that increase in stem cell mobilization is ultimately going to help drive new stem cells into areas of tissue damage. So as the body is repairing and remodeling, we get new central nervous system brain cells to move into that area to help that area heal and then regain normal function. So that's the thought process. We have to first understand what happens in the process of the condition itself. What are the mechanisms of action of hyperbaric? And does it make sense to apply this therapy to this person? And certainly in the case of TBI, the answer is absolutely yes. And in fact, this is one of those indications that has quite a bit of research backing the concept. I'll link to a few papers below 
if you want to check out some of the research on TBI, concussion, and hyperbaric oxygen. Just to give a few protocols for me in our office, if I have a child, let's say, who plays sports or, or an adult, and they have their first concussion, it's a mild concussion, we'll typically do about 10 hours of hyperbaric almost as quickly as possible, certainly in less than two weeks. Oftentimes, we'll do one session twice a day for five days. You really want to get that free-floating oxygen, that initial phase of oxygenation to that hypoxic tissue very quickly. And by doing that, especially with a mild concussion, it seems we can really reduce any of the uh, long-term consequences pretty quickly. If it's a longer standing uh, concussion or a more significant concussion in that moment, or maybe it's their second or third concussion, likely that 10 hours is not going to be enough that person's much more likely to do 20 to 30 hours. And if we're talking a very severe traumatic brain injury, then it's more likely we're going to be doing 40 hours, 50 hours. And those people might be doing, you know, three to five hours a week for eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks to really get that repetitive oxygenation, really upregulate those stem cells for, for healing the brain tissue. And that takes a much longer period of time. Hope that's helpful. And I uh, will see you next time.